morning my legitimate mates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the Ariane by Aura Rosa. Uh, it is awesome. It is a backpack. Um, I'm loving all the rivets as an accent. And then it's got this really cool strap. So it's got a twist lock so you twist it open. And then it's also got a magnetic snap in the top. And then the bag actually like comes quite large. So if you didn't have the strap on, you could just do that and you can fit quite a lot in it. It has a slip pocket on one side and a zipper pocket on the other. So if you would like to see how to make this bag, please stay tuned. So I'm going to start with the straps like I pretty much always do. So I'm going to put a line of double sided tape down the center. And I just kind of pat it down. I don't pull it because I don't want the vinyl underneath to stretch. Because unfortunately that does happen sometimes. So these are the shoulder straps. So I'm just going to pull the backing off, pop that in the bin, and then I'm going to fold both sides into the center. Now I like to do this at the same time uh, because ultimately I found this is quicker, but you can do one side and then the other. Uh, but by doing it this way I don't have to draw the line because you can just see that both sides are even. So that is entirely up to you how you wish to do that. And you don't want to pull it, you just kind of want to pat it down because you don't want your vinyl to stretch. Now you might be using vinyl that doesn't stretch, um, but this one probably would a little bit if I was to pull on it. So it's easier to just kind of pat it down like that. And then I'm going to go up to three and three quarters. And I'm going to start on the end and I'm going to back stitch and then forward. And I'm going to start with the join side first. Now if you want to, you can clip it together. I'm just going to hold it in place and do a couple of stitches at a time and use my fingers like clips. Now the reason I'm so happy to do this is because I've got fake nails on. So it's going to destroy a fake nail before it destroys my finger. And that is why I get them. Black hides all the, the dirt and stuff. Not that I don't wash my hands or anything, but I tend to scuff the fake nails and you don't see scuff marks on black, whereas you do on a lighter colour. Then we're going to backstitch, I'm going to trim it off and then I'm going to come up the top and I'm going to do the other side. Now I'm sewing this in the same direction so that I don't get any twisting happening. second side a lot faster than the first. I see now there's no twists. I knew that this would twist uh, because it is a stretchier vinyl. So that's one strap. Now we're going to do the same thing to the second one. I'm going to do all my straps first just because then I don't have to think about them again because they're done. All right, together and down. Okay. 
I've put eucalyptus and lemon in my diffuser today and it smells lovely. I'm commenting on it because it's like wafting right towards me. It's lovely. All right. Working our way down to the end. Fold it over. And so again, we're going to start with the open side to stitch down the edge. We're going to back stitch to lock it in. And then we're just going to line it up on top of each other. Now if you wanted to, you could add a second piece of double-sided tape in the middle here and then fold it over again and stick it in place. Um, if you're not confident to just be able to push it together like this. And if so long as you put it in the centre, um, you won't stitch over it. So there'll be less double-sided tape to gum you up your needle. We're going to get to the end and we're going to back stitch. Then I'm going to trim it off. Come up the top and trim off those tails. Now the main reason we stitch the other side is A, so it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, and B, because it helps us squash down this side. I heard that. I just run out of bobbin thread. I'm probably going to need a third bobbin for this bag. But we'll see. The straps always take the most. That's why I like to start there. that stitched well that was disappointing there's definitely a bobbin so why would it do that oh we're having the bobbin game today it would appear all right trim off the tails push them into the bin now my bin is at the end of the table, so I can just push it off the end of the table and it won't fall on the floor. Well, most of the time. Sometimes I still miss. And backstitch. And then we're going to come up to where the join is and trim off those tails. So that I don't forget later on these ones. Okay, so that is now two straps. So I'm going to pop them aside until we need them a little bit later. And I'm going to grab out my strap connector pieces. So we're going to do the same thing again. Um, you have the option to put some extra stabilizer on the back of these. Uh, but I feel they'll be fine. I've used this vinyl before with no complaints. The stable over that just helps to really reinforce it. So if you've got a super stretchy vinyl, uh, you might want to put that into facing. It just makes it that little bit stronger. So I'm folding both sides into the center. Like that. Then I'm going to flip them right sides up and I'm going to top stitch the edge and the other edge. Then I'm going to chain stitch these. So I'll trim this off and pop it in the other side. Like so. And then 
I'm gonna just do some more lines because I can and because it looks cool. Now these are optional, you don't have to do these ones. These, at this point we're just doing them for decorative purposes. Um, but this will also, I guess, add a little bit of st extra stability to the strap pieces. So now we need our rectangle rings. And we're going to put the join side up to where we're going to fold it, like so. And then I'm going to put an end on. And the sides. Pull this one out and do the same thing. So the side we're going to fold over is where your join is, so that you won't see it. Now we're going to be doing a lot of uh, rivets and stuff, but I'm going to do these at the end, like later. But I will be putting a rivet there to keep that up and nice like that. But it can be a little bit later, because uh, the rivets are going to be like a nice accent on the bag. So, next up, we, I'm pretty sure we need our... Handles. Doing handles next. They feel like the handles. So we like to do all straps. So, down the center and down the center, or as close to the center as you can eyeball. Or you can draw a line. You don't have to do it my way. You can draw the line first. I used to draw the line. In all my earlier videos I drew the line. But then I discovered that this was ultimately a lot quicker. So that's why I switched. Do the second one. So the straps are like a big feature on this bag, all the different straps that we do. Right, so now we need our ruler and we're going to measure up to a certain point and then put a clip on. Um, I'm not giving out the measurement because it's not my pattern to do so. All right, so where those clips are, now we're going to fold this over again and we're gonna stitch from clip to clip. Like that. I'm just going to add some extra clips in the center here. So this is going to make a nice skinny little handle to grab onto. If we do all our straps first, then we can just attach them all to the bag and be done. way down like so so now I just want to stitch from here back stitch while I'm still on my um, longer stitch length and back stitch and then I'm going to lift the needle up and just kind of shove that one out of the way to chain stitch the next one. Now we obviously do still have a little bit of a tail, but there's much less doing it this way than trimming it off. And if it's annoying you, you can come now and, and cut it off. Just make sure that you get those bits. And then we're going to grab a lighter and just melt it down so it won't go anywhere. 
Now when you're melting, you want to try and get it in the blue part of the flame because then it won't discolor your thread and it's more likely to melt instead of actually catch fire. That's also not what we want. Second one. Check. Melt the end. Melt the end. The other reason why we melt them is it creates little balls. It's also going to help prevent the, it coming unthreaded as well as not have our pokey ones. So this is now our strap. Um, so don't worry about this because this goes into the seam and gets a rivet. So it'll be fine. So we've got one more strap left, I believe. Which I think is that one. Yes. So this is the one that is going to have our... Oh, let me just double check that. Yeah, so this is the one that's going to have our twist lock. Or whatever kind of lock you decided to put on it. Now, I've only got one inch strap ends. So I am going to alter this slightly on camera so that you can see what I'm doing um, so that I can get the one inch strap end on. So the idea is, is we'll do this and then put the strap end on. But I am about half an inch too wide. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pick this up and pull it over further. Or just trim it off. It could go either way. So I'm going to bring it over like this, so it's going to come down to a little bit more of a point, and then go over, and now that is one inch at the end. So I'm going to put a clip on that. And I'm just going to feel to make sure that that's not going to be bulky underneath, but it does, it actually feels fine. So I've just got it to taper down at the end so that I, my strap end fits because I don't have one and a half inch strap ends. So that is my solution to that problem. You can also leave the strap end off, but this bag looks good with the hardware because I've picked quite a simple thing. I haven't done any embroidery on the outside. I've just picked a nice simple bag. Um, you can see it does taper down at the end. See how just like a little bit though? So it probably starts from what there. So one, two, three, three and a half inches. Um, but that's still fine because I've got a one inch lock. So that's still going to fit on there without any dramas. So now I'm going to top stitch both edges. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. Now this time I used the clips because I was altering the end. Um, this is not in the pattern, I just, I didn't have, this is my solution to the problem of not having the right hardware. Now I, I'm just going to stitch, a, no I'm not going to stitch across the bottom. I am still going to back stitch it off though. That will be hidden in the strap end. Um, but because my vinyl's twisty, I want to come back to this end and top stitch the other side. So we're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch. And back stitch. Locking that in. I'm not worried about my little bird's nest here because that's not going to be seen either. So I'm going to take one of my strap ends. 
without losing all of the screws would be lovely. And I'm just going to slide it over. Oh, I've got to melt those ends of the threads. I don't want them poking out. Go away. Right. Slide it on. Like so. Push it down. Flip it over. And then I'm going to use my electric screwdriver. Now this is from eBay. Uh, it was about 30 bucks, And I use it a lot. I definitely feel like it was worth the purchase. It comes with a whole bunch of different ends. Uh, ones that I will never ever use. But that's okay. I really only use this one. But it has got um, like Allen key ends and stuff as well, if that would be useful to your life. Strap end is now on. Just because we can. I will have to do more later and that's fine. But I just wanted to put it on. So that should be all of the strap pieces now. Um, yep, yep, yep. So now we're going to take our little accent piece which is this one here and we need a ruler and a pen for the most part I'm actually doing this in order of the pattern so I'm just going to measure down each side and the ends so the idea is, is we're going to fold this under so it all fits but I need some scissors which I know I just had and I'm just going to trim off the angle from line to line so from there to there and that way it won't be bulky in the corners so then again we're going to get some double-sided tape and we're going to go across I'm just putting it just on the outside of the line and doing long edges first and then I'm going to peel off that backing and I'm going to come and I'm going to then put some double sided tape on the short edges as well but this way I won't overlap the backing and then it won't be held to pull off. So like that and across there like that. So all four edges now have some double-sided tape. Pull off these backings as well. And now I can start folding it over. So I want to fold it over to up to the line. Like that. I'm going to do the two long ones first just because that's a habit that I have. Uh, but you could just work around it if you wanted to. The idea is, is that the ends won't overlap because we've done those fancy little corner trims. See? Voila. So like that and that. Now I want to stitch the short ends. Yes. So I'm going to put my needle in. I'm going to do three stitches. Then I'm going to go back into the first hole, or you can back stitch like that. You can do it either way. So now that's that end held down. You can add clips on here if you need them. Trim off those tails. now I've got this and now I think we're up to a construction part so we need our um, back together so we're gonna need our back panel so our back panel is the one where we've put all our crazy amounts of interfacing and it's asking you to zigzag your two shoulder straps together. Now I don't have a zigzagging option 
but I am going to show you how I'm going to do it with a straight stitch. Because I don't, I don't have zigzag. It's not a thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up right sides up like this and I'm going to put them oops, in the machine under like this. I'm going to line them up and I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Make sure that they're flush and stitch over and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to come back and I'm going to manually do like a, a spotted zigzag. Really? So then we're going to come back because zigzag is not actually an option for me. So this is like another way to hold them together. Same principle as when you put stitches in. Now we won't see this bit, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I did try to be neat, but it's also not the end of the world that it's not perfectly neat. So instead of actual zigzag to join it, I have created my own version. And so then we want to take this. Now this is my top bit where my little uh, square is, but I'm just going to hold it upside down. I'm also going to fold it in half and trim the center spot just because it'll be easier to measure out from there if I can see it. And then we need to take the ruler and I'm going to put down some double-sided tape because it's always easier. I'm just going to put a little bit there because that's going to hold my straps down for me. Pick off that backing. And then we're going to lay these straps down like so. So I want the middle, so I've got my, um, where I put my little nick is the middle of the ruler and then I want to line up the straps in the middle there like that. So that is where they're going to sit. Now I can let go because I've put that little bit of double sided tape there to kind of tack it in place almost. And then we want to, actually I need this back. We're going to measure out and put little marks like this. And I'm going to stitch that whole rectangle that I just drew. And that's going to hold them down. I'm going to start here. I'm going to move Scully so I don't knock them all over. I'm going to go up. Now again, we're not going to see this. But this is just to hold everything in place. I don't like going too fast with too many layers of vinyl and there's quite a few layers in this bit but they are on Ta -da! So now we're going to take this piece and it is going to go over the top like this so we can put some double-sided tape on this to also tack it in place. Double-sided tape is your friend. I use a lot of it for sewing, so I buy it like a lot of rolls at a time. But in all fairness, I do sew pretty much every day, so that's why I need so much. It's all relative to how much sewing you do. So then I'm just going to put that over there like so. Making sure that it is, in fact, lined up in the center. I think I did a pretty good job. So that is now over there. And then I'm going to stitch that top and bottom, I believe. And then I'm going to add some rivets. So 
So I'm going to stitch from here. some rivets. So I need my hole punch, which is this here, and we're going to do them in each corner. So I'm going to do one there, and there. Then I'm going to switch that for the rivet set and I've got double capped rivets now if you've got single capped rivets and this one doesn't have the cap push them up from the bottom otherwise you can push them down from the top like I'm going to see the rivets just kind of make it I think personally Then I'm going to flip it over, take away all of these threads. Not that they're really in my way, but it's just good to be tidy. It's a good habit to be tidy. One, two, three, and four. So then we're going to come under here and I'm just going to set them. need to install our wraparound strap which we are going to do by we need to do a measurement and we need to poke a hole and I lent my whole pokey thing to someone so that's not really gonna work I am going to use a craft knife because my stiletto has been borrowed So we need to go below this and then I'm going to poke a hole right there and I'm going to put my craft knife all the way in so it's like a it's a vertical hole but that's still fine and then I want to measure and I'm going to draw the line that I need to do. Or even better, we could draw it on the back. Feels like a good plan. So I'm going to flip this over. And so here's the top of my hole. And so I'm going to measure down. Like that. So I can see how big I need my hole to be. So I'm using my ruler to make sure that my hole is going to be big enough. And then... We cut, what do we do? We cut a V shape like this and then do a second line. So apparently we're gonna cut out that shape. And that'll give it more space to fit in, I guess. So. Up. And then the V part, and then the V part, and then the straight line. Now make sure that you haven't got your hand in the way underneath. How cool is that? Out. Done. Rubbish. Oh, I didn't make my line long enough. Silly, silly me. Because this end was wider. I remember that. <sighs> it's fine. I'm going to come to here. 
Um, I could even use scissors at this point to come down like that and then triangle out the end. That's essentially what we're doing, triangling out the end. We all know how much I love to do that. So now we're going to bring this in to the hole. Like that. And okay, so we're going to mark it in. And we want it to just come in. We need to have it in enough because we're going to attach rivets to here so that it will uh, stay. So I don't need that much out. I just need a little bit less. And then we need to mark our rivet holes. I'm going to use a pen. So we're going to go here. Here. And then here. And here. So they show you where to mark these on the pattern. I'm going to start with the ends that are going to hold it in place for me. So again, we need the hole punch. Oops, I just made that move. It's not at all what I was trying to do. Okay, so that's back to where it needs to be. So I'm going to lift this up, put a hole, and another one. And then I'm going to put those two rivets in, and then I'll do the other end. So that nothing shifts, otherwise I'm going to start making more holes than is necessary. So I'm going to do those two. Flip it over, put the caps on. And again, if you're not using double cap rivets for this, if you've got a bunch of single caps that you want to get rid of, push them up from the bottom, not down from the top like I did. Flip it over. Squish. And line that up on there. And then bring it back. I know this seems like a lot of effort to keep switching, but this will ensure now, this can't move, so this won't slip, so I won't accidentally put holes in the wrong spot now. Worth it, in my opinion. So I'm just going to line this up with my pen mark. Now you can use pen because you literally cut out the whole section the pen was on. Grab another two. Rivets. One and two. Flip it over. Two caps. One, two. Then your rivet set. One and two. Awesome. We are about halfway through the pattern, if not a bit more. So now we're going to put our handles on that we made earlier. So that's these ones here. They will be placed with the join side facing up because right sides go together. So that's the first thing we need to know. And we're going to take our mm, erasable marker. And from that center, which is why I marked it, we're going to measure out to there and out all markings can be found in the pattern the pattern is in the description by the way guys and so then face down this needs to be there now this will get a rivet so don't worry if it's looking a bit weird you won't really see it we're going to rivet it to the bag a bit later and then we're going to bring this around, making sure that there's no twists in any of it. Now, I always like to add two clips to hold it in place, 
because one clip, if I just put one clip, it can still shift. Whereas if I put one and then another one, it's not coming off the fabric, so it's not going to shift and twist. Alright, and then we're going to tack that down. So I'm just doing it within the seam allowance. I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length. And I'm just going to sew the whole way across because it's quicker than having to back stitch and cut it. Uh, and because it's within the seam allowance, you won't see it anyway. And you save thread, weirdly enough. So that is one handle now on. But while we're still on the back piece, we also need to put in our strap connector parts. So I'm just going to trim here because that's the center. Again, I love to just find the center of everything because it's quicker. And then from there... We are measuring, where's the measure? Oh, over here. This is what happens when I don't put things away properly. So we're going... So these are gonna be wider than what we just did for the handles, by the way. So that's our measurements for that. I'm just gonna move these out of my way. Reset. Always reset if it gets too crowded. Right, so I'm gonna, I don't really need two things on there, but I am just gonna keep one because it's kind of holding it in place for me. Actually, we could probably put the rivets in now before we attach it because it's gonna be easier. And you most likely have your rivet press already out since we just used it. So I'm just gonna put a rivet up the top to stop that from like slipping down. Also, it's a nice accent. The rivets make it look fancy. Oh, actually we're gonna rivet it to the bag. So I retract my previous statement. We're not gonna do that yet. We are in fact going to attach it to here. So again, I'm gonna use two clips. One and two. One and two. So I'm going to tack these down like I did with the top handles. I'm going to back stitch to lock it in. I'm just going to stitch across because it's quicker, but you can just back stitch and come off again. This is not its forever hold, this is just a basting. And because it's within the seam allowance, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's try this again. So I've already got my hole on this one, but we want it to go through all the layers. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's sitting flush and even, and then we'll pick it up and then put the hole all the way through all the layers. And a clip. So I'll squish it in a second. I'm gonna lay this one down, hold it up, flatten even, under she comes. Like so. One and two. I'm actually very happy with my colour, my hardware choices for this bag. It's looking awesome. So now we're just going to squish those down. One. And two. Done. Magnet time. So the magnet is coming up here. So we're going to need a pen. And you'll want the gasket from your magnet. Now I'm using the same size as the pattern says. You can use a bigger magnet. It wouldn't be the worst thing to be done. So we're going to measure down in the center. And that's the middle point. And then we're going to take the gasket 
and the circle goes over the point that you've done and then you're going to draw the two lines that's with the gasket. Now they don't have to be perfectly straight, you can actually angle them any way your heart desires. And then we're going to stab the holes with a craft knife. Like that. And then does it want the male or the female? I don't know. Whoops. Um, I think that looks like male on that one. Although it probably doesn't necessarily matter. You can do it either way. The only downside to fake nails is I always slightly struggle to pull magnets apart. Okay, so I'm going to push that through. I'm putting the female on here. And then I'm bending them out. Now there's a bit of a debate about whether you should push your, um, your prongs in or out. I personally do them out because it sits flatter. But some people do them in so that it's not going to poke out at your thing. But because we've got the interfacing stabilizer there, it's probably not going to matter anyway. But that looks like it should be just about done for all pieces. So that is your back panel done. Now we need to install our magnet on the front. So again, I'm going to find that's going to fall off. Don't fall off. It fell off. That just means I didn't iron it for long enough. Stabilizer takes more to stick on, as you can tell. But that's okay. I'm still going to use it. I'm just going to have to stab it in sections. So I will do this one since it fell off. And then I'm going to take my ruler and measure down and put a dot. And then take this gasket and draw the lines again and then cut them. So I'm just doing it individually and then I will layer it up. Cut the hole, cut the hole. So from the outside we're going to stab this through said holes that I just did, which is sometimes really hard to see. Then I'm going to layer this on like that, then I'm going to put the gasket on. You just have to add an extra layer because apparently this one didn't stick. So that could be I didn't hold it long enough or my iron wasn't hot enough when I was doing it or occasionally I have accidentally ironed it where the iron, the glue side isn't even touching the fabric. That's happened to me before. Okay, so that's that one done. And this one done. So lay front and back panels right sides together. So you need to make sure that magnet is up the top. I, I would say obviously, but you know, it might not be. We're going to clip it. Now you might be wondering why am I actually using clips? And the answer is, is because I don't want this to shift because it's a bit slippery, or stretch, because it is a minorly stretchy vinyl. And so the clips kind of help prevent that. And we are using... I just had to check the seam allowance. It is a 3 8 seam allowance, which pretty much means between quarter and half. For anyone that uh, works in centimetres, We are. So I am going to lay this out flat and I'm going to top stitch each side and I'm going to go back up to my three and three quarters so that the top stitching matches. That sounds like it's going to have issues. I can already tell. It means that my bobbin has done something crazy. Okay, so we want to flatten this out. You want to open this out flat. 
And I'm just going to do it as I go. But if you do have a skinny double-sided tape, you can use that instead to hold it open flat. Or you can just use your hands like I'm going to do. So I just bring one hand underneath and smooth it out. And then I'm using my top hand like a pin, but to hold it down. You just do it in sections. Now the other side is always easier than the first. And it's going to be like a pretty little accent. Now I'm just going to roll this up so that it fits under the throat of my machine. And then I'm going to do the other side. Now you can feel if it's not under there. Uh, but if you need to, you can also check with your hand. And back step. accent down the side. Now I imagine we're doing the other side. You just kind of have to try and ignore the um the straps. You could probably pin them up out of the way if they are super annoying you. Now the tricky part of this bag, I reckon, is about to be, some people might struggle with the top stitching of this side. But we're going to do it so that it matches. Um, but if you've watched this video and you're like, nope, not for me, you could skip it. It's just like, pretty. So we're going to do this again. Repeat with the other side. That's not what the pattern says has a lot more detail on it, but that's what we're doing. We're repeating with the other side. And back stitch. Oh, we're not top stitching. I want a top stitch. So, I'm going to open this out. Now this is going to make the bag a little bit scrunchy. If you've done this with a firm um, leather, you may or may not be able to do this, depending on your machine. But I am going to do the top stitching on both sides because it's pretty. And I like top stitching. And I like a challenge. It's no fun if it's too easy. I have found that I enjoy bags making bags the most when they have the right amount of easy and tricky. So they have a lot of easy parts and then they just have like a couple of tricky parts. It's like it keeps my brain interested. Now I don't like things that are overly tricky. I won't make heaps of them. I have to concentrate too hard. But if they're too easy, then I find that my brain gets bored. And I know that sounds ridiculous. But I like bags that are the right amount of tricky and easy. This one's ticking those boxes so far. And after making a few, I reckon you could uh, remember the measurements pretty well. Alright, so I'm at the end. Spin the bag around. Go back up the other side. Now, the way back's always easier because you are unscrunching the bag as you go. The way down's always the hardest. And then trim off the tails, which all should be at the same end because we just twisted. Okay, so we're going to leave that aside now that that's... Oh, you know what else we forgot to do? And it's just occurred to me. I forgot to attach the handle to the other side because I was just looking at it. So we need to do that. And I don't remember those measurements. So we're just going to go back up into the pattern. Where are they? Okay. Or I could have just measured them. That would have worked too, but apparently my brain wasn't that smart. 
we all have our moments. So I'm just going to measure the handles and I'm going to tack them on. Because obviously we need that on there. Uh, I'm not even going to clip them because I'm going to do them right now. I'm going to stitch straight across because it's quick and easy. And I've back stitched them down. Now that's the whole exterior. Except the base. But we'll do that in a minute. We're going to go on to our next lot of pieces. So we want, remember we want this piece? Yes, and our lining piece. So the inside's quite simple. It hasn't got a lot going on, which is nice. So you should have three pieces that pretty much look the same size. A base, two rectangle, or one rectangle, one square, and this is the facing piece. So this is for our zipper pocket. This is obviously our base. And this piece, and one of these pieces... Now one's just a little bit of a different size, so I need the shorter one, which is this one. Because these two are the same for the body of the bag. And then this one and this one are for the pocket. So I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length. And using the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to sew. Now, if you use a larger seam allowance by mistake, uh, it will just make a slightly smaller pocket. All right, so we've done that. And then it wants us to top stitch on the fabric. So you want the vinyl to be underneath, or the seam allowance to be underneath where we're gonna stitch. I'm gonna go back up to three and three quarters just because I like everything to be pretty. Like that. And then we're going to fold this. Oh, I see what I've done. I've done these the opposite way. Thought it looked different to the picture. So when I've cut them, I've cut the vinyl as the fabric and the fabric as the vinyl. However, this is still going to work, so it's fine. So I'm going to fold it over like this. And then I'm going to top stitch along this edge. Now yours probably looks opposite to this because... I don't know what happened, but at five o'clock this morning when I was cutting it, apparently I cut out these two pieces the wrong size. But it doesn't matter, it's still gonna look very cool. And I'm okay with that decision. Okay, so now we have a, po a pocket. And I imagine we're going to lean it up against this. We are, so we're just going to line it up against our main panel. So it just means I have a very vinyl-y looking pocket. Uh, but that's still cool. And then I'm going to baste it down. Now, if you want to, you can clip it. I'm probably not going to. We're just going to baste. So basting is, for anyone who doesn't know what basting is, it means attach it, but within the seam allowance with whatever stitch you feel necessary because you won't see it but it's gonna hold it together as a single piece. That's what it's for. And this is why you shouldn't cut when you're half asleep. Trim off those tails. Now, I'm gonna to want to divide up this pocket. Let's see how they've done it. Okay, so we're going to take our, this, and we're going to measure across, and draw a line, like that, and then we're going to do the other side as well, line it up on the edge, like that. And so now I'm going to stitch those lines and I'm always going to go bottom to top because uh, then the back stitch and the tails are down there out of the way. 
and we're gonna get to here and we're gonna I'm gonna backstitch twice and that's gonna reinforce that area and then we're gonna come to the next one and do the same thing and I don't think that's stitching and that is because I ran out of bobbin thread. All right, I'm going to hit pause and we are going to do a new bobbin and I'll be right back. is done. So we're going to start at the bottom. And up we go. Like that. Trim off the tails. One side is now done. Now you can um, wipe off the the chalk dust, I actually find that it comes off better if you rub it on another piece of fabric. So I rub it on my clothes quite regularly. And that's okay. So now we are on to the next one. So I'm going to take my zipper accent and I'm going to take my other main panel. In this piece, and I'm gonna put right sides together, but we need to draw a rectangle on here. So I am going to use one of these. That one looks good, but I want the half inch. These are the three eighths inch. I'm using a half a size five zipper today, not a size three. So that one's no good to me. I need the other set, which is in here. So I. That one looks good. Um, so you, you can ultimately do any size zipper you want, but you just need to make sure that it's going to be the same size or smaller than that. So I actually need a small one. Otherwise the zipper pocket won't fit. Okay. Now it'll fit. So I'm going to put it in the center. So if you want to find the center, we fold it in half, snip it, and then the center of this is marked because it's got every inch marked. So you can put that there and then trace out your rectangle. Or you can use a ruler. I could have done all of that with a ruler, but why have fun toys if I don't ever use them? So I'm going to find the center of this as well. I'm going to find the center bottom because we're going to need it later when we attach the base and it's just easier to do now. Right. This actually doesn't have a right and wrong direction, which is lovely. And we are measuring down a little bit. Where's my ruler? That to there, that. To there like that and so now I'm going to stitch the top and bottom lines with a joining stitch length which today is two and a half I don't think I've mentioned that yet so I'm going to stitch along the top line and back stitch at the end and then I'm just going to do a little jump stitch over to the other side back stitch stitching back stitch there Trim, trim, snip, and snip, and then we're going to get some scissors, and we're going to fold this over, and we're going to triangle out those corners, one, and two, you could have also instead done a Tory pocket, um, either or so now i'm going to finger press that edge up and finger press that edge down i may still need to iron this i'm thinking i probably will but sometimes the fabric is stiff enough that you can get away without ironing it you just have to finger press it really good and i think today is going to be one of those times which is amazing so now we've done that we need to grab our pocket pieces. Now one is bigger than the other. And I want to grab, what color zip do I want? No. 
I am thinking I could go brown or cream. Cream could work. Let's do cream. So I need to cut a piece of zipper tape. Singe the ends with your lighter so that it doesn't fray. Now different zips, and I have found zips from the same factory in different colours, fray different amounts. I do not know why, it is just one of those things. Now I'm using a really cool key zipper because I think it's fabulous. Um, and why not? Just gives a little added something to the inside. Not that the inside's not already busy enough, but you know. I like extremes. If you've never tuned in before, that is who I am. I like extreme things. Now, why is this not going on? Sometimes the use of my zipper jig comes in handy for when zippers are stubborn and don't want to go past the melted bit I just did. So I'm going to put it kind of not too far in. Actually, I didn't even need to put that on yet, but anyway. So the pattern's going this way. So I'm going to take the zipper line it up on the edge and stitch it about an eighth of an inch from the top edge trim off the tails and then I'm going to take the other side and do the same thing now luckily for me this fabric doesn't really have a right and a wrong side right sides up I just both sides are the same so it doesn't really matter for me oh I missed the edge see that I did not line it up properly and I missed you want that to stay okay so now we want to have the 8 inch piece up the top so when we fold it down it should line up that is the name of the game, which means, oh, I did put this on the right way. That was a fluke. Okay, so we're going to take this piece and lay it over the top of our zipper piece. And I just need to pull the zipper pull through so it's hanging out at the top. And then you just kind of want to place this over the hole so that there's the same amount of zipper tape on both sides. Now I'm going to start in front of the zipper pull and I'm going to stitch and back stitch because you won't really see my stitches. If you're doing a contrasting colour, you might just want to not do the back stitch and get around to the start because uh, it has less bulk that's viewable. So now I'm going to get to here and put my needle down and I'm going to zip this all the way up so that the zipper pull is now out of my way. I'm going to needle down and I'm going to pivot. I'm going to go over the zip. Now if you're using a metal zip, please be careful not to hit the metal zip with your needle. Because uh, you will break it. It will break instantly. Or bend. Or worse, it might damage something within your machine. So just be conscious of that. So now, I'm going to zip that open just because I can. And I'm going to stitch down the sides. And I'm going to leave the bottom open because that will be one of my last seams later. And then we can go up. So you can go from top to bottom or bottom to top along these edges, like so. Uh, but I have now sealed off the sides of the zipper pocket, but I've left the bottom open. Okay. Next up. Where are we up to? Oh, we're getting close to the end. That's done, that's done, that's done. Okay, so we're going to put right sides together of our lining pieces. But we're going to leave a gap in one side. So I'm going to do the gap side first because if I forget to leave a gap, 
I can always do it on the second side. Now I'm really hoping I don't forget, considering I've just said it out loud, but if you're just sewing by yourself, you want to try to remember to do the gap first. So I'm going to stitch to there, and then back stitch and stop. And then I'm going to come down here, and I want to leave a big gap. The bigger the gap, the easier it is uh, to turn the bag through. And we're going to deal with the, the gap later through our zipper pocket, which is why we left it open. Okay, other side. So this one, because we've left a gap, now we can sew all the way down this side. Like so. Trim. Trim. Okay. Next up, I believe, is attach it to the outside. So I'm going to turn the lining right side down. And I'm not putting the bag base on, you will notice. We're going to do this a slightly different way. So, I'm going to take the bag exterior with it right sides in, and I'm going to place this inside it with right sides out, so that the correct sides will be touching each other. And then I'm going to start with... Nope, that's not going to work. I am going to join up my middle seams of my front and my back so that I can pull this out and find the side point and make a little trim mark because that is where the seam goes for the inside piece and that's how I'm going to line that up. So in it goes. I would like my zipper pocket on my back wall. That's a choice. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to clip it. And then I'm going to come to the side. So I'm going to take this side seam and line it up with that mark that I just made. And I'm going to have my clips facing the lining because that's the way I'm going to stitch it on the machine. And then I'm going to take this other mark on the side and line that one up as well. Like that. And then I can just add some clips in between those points. Whoops. And then line the back up. I'm adding a lot of clips. Because, oops, I don't want anything to move while I'm stitching it. So by using lots and lots of clips, nothing has the chance to escape. Okay. That was possibly overkill on clips, but I don't care. So now I'm going to pick a spot, any spot. This spot looks good. I'm going to take off one of the clips, slide the bag under stitch, back stitch, and then we're going to go around the bag. So I'm going to clean up my clips as I go and I'm just going to keep bringing the bag around because it is a circle after all. Oops, drop the clip. Needle down, readjust the bag. Needle down, readjust the bag. And back stitch when you get back to the start. Trim off the tails. So now I want to pull the lining and I want to stitch. I want to stitch along here. So the best way to do that is I'm going to shuffle this underneath. Now this might be a little bit tricky for you. If you've got a cylinder arm, just jump on that and top stitch around. Which I do have, but that's not going to help the people that don't have. So 
I am scrunching up this side because it's easier to scrunch and I am using my hand to make sure that that seam allowance is underneath where I'm going to stitch and then I'm going to top stitch around there. Needle down. Now this is going to be a lot of pivoting. And you also need to make sure that nothing else is underneath where you're stitching. Except the seam allowance part that you're trying to stitch. Needle down. Bring the bag around. So this is giving a second layer of stitching to those handles. And it's going to have some pretty top stitching. Well, technically under stitching. You do this on clothing, um, they call this under stitching. Needle down, readjust. Feels like a bit of a jumbled mess as I'm going. Oh, I'm back to the start. I'm back stitch. So it did feel like a bit of a jumbled mess, but I'm fairly confident I didn't accidentally get the other half of the bag. Which I did not. Huzzah. All right, so now I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out again. And I'm going to add the base pieces on. Now, for the actual base lining, if you join up the seam allowances here, this point here is the halfway point. So I can trim that. And I already did that one on the other side. So I can take this and I'm going to fold it in half. And then in half again, like this. And then those are the four corners. Trim both of them. And here. So when you open it out, you've now got four little clips, which are going to line up with those four little clips we made on the main part of the bag. So I'm going to start with the side one and the first thing I'm going to do is whichever way the seam allowance is going up this end I want to make sure that it's going to match at the other end. That way your lining won't be twisty. So then I'm going to grab the opposite side and I'm going to do the same thing. So this is going this way so I want it to sit this way at this end as well. And then I'm going to come and do the middle points. And then we're just going to start adding more clips to the circle. Now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bumpy right at the very edge. In fact, I almost expect it. It is a circle after all. Um, so long as it's not bumpy where you're going to stitch. And I'm making the clips face the circle part. Now I always use a lot of clips for circles. I don't I don't want it to slip or move or misbehave in any way, shape or form. And yes it takes a little bit longer to add extra clips, but on the other hand, I probably won't have to unpick it. And I say probably because if I said I definitely don't, then something would happen just my luck really. Two more clips. Now that seems like a lot of clips but I'm okay with it. So I am going to pull one clip off and start there. Stitch and back stitch making sure we're on a joining stitch length not the decorative one from the top stitching we just did. And I'm just going to slowly bring it around. It is a circle. You'll feel like you're sewing a circle. 
but it's also a 3D object. So I'm kind of almost holding this part up and feeding it into the machine. Make sure you turn the whole bag, not just the lining part, or it um, will start to drag on you. Then you want to check and make sure that there's no um, pinches. And then I'm going to take some zigzag scissors and trim around the circle. By doing this, this is going to help the uh, base sit in the bag a lot flatter and nicer. Now this is a bit, it's a little bit thicker because I've got the vinyl there. You will most likely have the same issue. If you can't snip through it with your zigzag scissors that you own, um, you can put little snip marks in it, vertical snip marks, or you can just trim the seam allowance down with normal scissors. All right. So now we're going to do the other end. So I'm going to push all of them in there. And I'm going to take my base. Now, I've already drawn the markings for the bag feet on here. And I already found the center because I had to put my logo on the base. Because that's where I like my logo to be. And then I'm going to punch the holes that I've set up for the bag feet. The pattern tells you what sizes to use. And then I'm going to push through all of the rivets, flip it over, and then click the bag feet on. Now, you don't have to use bag feet, but in my opinion, this bag is all about like the way the hardware looks, and so it's worth it. But if you don't have bag feet, you don't have to do them. But if you don't have bag feet, don't go putting embroidery on the bottom because the water will literally instantly soak through there if it was to sit in a puddle or something. Okay. Bag feet are on. Now, I've got my middle front... or I've got my middle... I've got a middle. So, the one middle that I've done, I'm going to squish that and come along here and then do another center point and then I'm going to put those two center points together to find the side points like that and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to pop this in and we're going to do the same thing again And I will probably use even more clips this time. So again, they are going to face the base piece. I'm going to put three clips in, and then I'm going to come across and do the opposite side. And then I'm going to come and do the side points. I like to put more than one clip so it can't move on me. Three is a good starting point you can do more or less that's entirely up to you once those four points are on you'll find it should because of the base has got the stabilizer it should quite easily come together and again i am going to use a lot of clips i do not want this slipping while i'm trying to sew it so if that means back-to-back -back clips, then so be it. Whatever you're comfortable with. Nobody is judging you if you use more clips or less clips. Circles are tricky. I understand this. This is a good way to conquer that fear. Lots and lots of clips. Some people also use staples, although I've personally never found that 
at all helpful because my stapler never goes through all the layers. Uh, I did try it twice and then I gave up. Uh, but if you've got a like a heavy duty industrial stapler, you can staple it in place and then once you've sewn it, you can pull the staples out. Alright, so again, I'm going to hold it up because it is, you know, stubborn. And we are going to stitch this down. I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Now, this should almost be easy because you can just pull the circle around. The stabilizer is kind of holding it all in place. So I almost find the outside easier than the lining one because nothing's trying to slip and move on me. But you do still have to bring this around. Don't skip that bit. Needle down, clean up the clips, twist it some more, next bit. And back stitch when you get back to the start. Now, I can see my first mistake right at the end. See how that's got like a bump? That is not going to look good on the other side. So we're going to unpick it. I felt it do it, or I felt like I thought it did it, and it did, and that's okay. So I'm just going to unpick that little section, and then from the top, since the top, well, since the bottom was the issue, I'm going to twist it the other way, and then I'm going to stitch it again, so that we don't have that issue. Solved. There's a lot of tails and mess in the way, but it will look pretty from the outside. Okay, so now we just stick our hand into our nice big gap that we left ourselves. Actually, no. No. I'm going to get my zigzag scissors and trim this. Now, I already know that they won't do the strap parts, but they'll do the other parts. So I can just skip where the straps are. Well, the strap connectors are. Work my way around. Push it into the bin. And then I'm going to grab a corner and I'm going to push it in. You want to um, basically dint the stabilizer. It's the easiest way to get the bag through, in my opinion. So I'm going to start with the exterior because it's going to be the stubborn part and I'm just using my thumbs to push it through the lining. Like that. So the bigger the gap, the easier it is to berth your bag. So that's where my issue was because there's just like a leftover piece of thread. I will melt that down in a second. But other than that, look at our lovely circle base. So this will need a Tory squish where you bend it over and then violently shake it. As someone said the other day, I manhandle the bag. But if it can't handle this, it can't handle the weight of stuff you're about to put in it. So give it a shake. You won't hurt it. All right, that's sitting even better now. So into the zipper pocket and grabbing the side of the bag, we're gonna pull the lining back through and then we're gonna stitch it shut. Now, the smaller the hole, the easier this would be, but the harder it would have been to turn your bag. So that is a guessing game that you get to play. Bag turning space versus stitching it up space. And everyone has their own magical amount. I like to leave about two to two and a half inches from the seam, like the end seam, and that way I can get to it easy. Like that. And then I'm going to push that back in, bring out my circle in my base, which looks lovely as well. 
And then we're going to take this and we're going to tuck in those raw edges like that. I put my finger at the side seams and pull tight, pinch it together and stitch it down. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, add some clips to hold it in place while you're stitching it. Because sometimes it does like to be cheeky and move on you, like right now. Uh, so I have to sit here and fix it. That's okay. And then I'm going to tuck that back in, zip it up, and then I'm going to put the lining in the bag. Now, you are about to notice that your lining is smaller than the bag, and that is okay because that's what's meant to happen. Because we're going to have this cute little kind of accent where it folds over and we're going to top stitch the edge. So that is the big plan. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can kind of just tuck it under like this um, and then pull up and that edge is there but there is actually a measurement that you can do to do this. You know what else I didn't do? We're going to have to unstitch the zipper pocket. I forgot to install the twist lock bit. Whoops. Forgot the twist lock bit. Even after I was just chatting about it, I still forgot it. That was silly. Alright, so we need our ruler. I will deal with the twist lock bit in a minute. It's fine. So we're going, oh look at that. See, it's like I know stuff. And then you can add a clip. Um, so you can just go around and clip this. Like this. I'm also going to clip the handles up and that's going to be part of my top stitching. Like that. So you just want to go around with the ruler and pull it all up accordingly. So this might take a minute. I might actually hit pause on the video while I go around and measure this because this could take a while. Um, so I'll be back once I've clipped it all together. All right. I have clipped that. I've also uh, put my lunch in the oven. So by the time this bag is done, it should be nearly lunchtime. So I'm going to go back up to my three and three quarter stitch length. And I'm going to start at this side seam. I'm not going to back stitch, as crazy as that is, because we're going to go completely around. So I'm not really worried about back stitching because I don't want there to be so many stitches it's ugly. So I'm going over the handles as well, and that's going to hold them down. And then we're just going to add in some rivets to them to make them look pretty. And I'm going slowly and I'm moving the bag around as I go around. And some bits you can go faster than others. I'm also going to trim off that tail because it was floating in the way. You don't have to do that. If it's not your way, you can ignore it. I can't. So I've stitched it. Moving around. Last little bit. So this actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. Um, and I probably could have recorded it, but I also wanted to get some food going because I'm hungry. I started my video late today, so I'm hungry. Right, so the top stitching is now done. So now it looks fabulous. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the rivet, and then I'm going to tuck these in the sides because I'm trying to get the bag to sit 
the way it's going to sit when it's closed, which is like this. So the front is slightly shorter than the back. And it naturally does that, so that's not me doing it. Then I'm going to take this strap to see where it's going to line up. Because I need to attach the mechanism. Which today I'm using a twist lock. You could use a twist lock or one of those like clip-in ones. I'm not sure what they're called. You, if you're making this out of like an all canvas type thing, you could use a quick release buckle here if you wanted it to have more of that kind of a feel. Uh, but we're holding it like this. And we're lining it up. So it's going, so this has to go straight around. So this is where I'm going to want to attach the lock, for lack of better words. Um, but first I have to actually attach this part. So I'm going to take it, line it up in the center of everything, and draw a rectangle. I'm going to unscrew these. The reason I like the electric one, it's actually just better for my wrist. In, push the button, although it is getting quite flat, as you can see. It gets most of the way out though, so that's all right. Okay, so there's my screws so I don't lose them. So that's this rectangle that I've drawn. Uh, but we need to go out a little bit as well so that we can get our screw holes in. So I'm just going to kind of draw it. This is what I'm drawing, like a weird shape. But that I need to cut all of that out so that I can get the screw into the other side. So I'm using my craft knife because it is super handy for this stuff. So I'm just going very slowly. I'm not in a hurry. I don't want to overcut. I also don't want to hack at it too much either. And I'm cutting just outside of the pen line. Because when I cut on the pen line, it's never big enough and I always have to go back. So I'm trying to avoid that problem this time around by cutting just outside the pen line. And all my layers are slowly coming out. So I've done like half. I always point the blade upwards and then push away from my body. That is what I have personally found to work best for me. Uh, but doesn't mean that that's going to work best for you. So you don't have to do it that way at all. go. Excellent. So that's all of that out now. So I should be able to lay this over the top like this and put this on the back and then screw everything back together. Now I did pretty well but not quite well enough. So I'm going to go in with some scissors. I need to take out that little bit there and a little bit more at this end. And this is where I get to hacking a little bit. And I know that's not super ideal, but every time I try and measure it, it never works out. So I start hacking and I've made peace with that. It always gets there in the end. It is better to cut uh, not enough than too much, because if you've cut too much, then you're going to see it, and that's also bad. 
It just looks like it's this corner that's the issue. So if I just chop out that corner, we should be right. Excellent. So now I'm going to take my backing piece and lay it down. Pick up my screw. Now these are theoretically slightly magnetic, although I feel like they lie to me about that sometimes. And I'm going to put one side in, actually. Might put one side in and then lay it over it like this. Then take my screwdriver. Oh, and I just knocked that out after all that. All that hard work and I knocked it out. <sighs> I was doing so well. that out as well that might help my cause a little bit oh it does okay line that up put the screw in I really should get the cutting dies for these I think it would make it much much easier all right it's half in I will tighten it in a minute. Now I've got to put the other half in. So it's not actually reaching. Oh my goodness. Which way do they go in? I don't know. That way? I just accidentally took the end off. Whoops. So that end doesn't quite want to go on, apparently. Bucky me. So I'm going to have to unscrew the other side to trim out a little bit more at this end. By a little bit, I literally mean like one millimeter, the tiniest amount more. Because if you trim out too much, then you're still going to have issues. Okay, third time is the charm, or so they say. Alright, lay that over there. How's that looking? Better, I guess. Definitely better. So. Really don't want to lose these screws because I know what I'm like. Pick one side. Okay, so that side's in a little bit. I'll come back and put it down more in a minute. Apparently these ones are not magnetic. All my things no longer magnetic. I'm not too sure which way that's going. Now this side won't go in. Oh my goodness. Stop it. Okay, that side is definitely in. This side is being a little bit stubborn and I'm not sure why, because this is the one we had in earlier. Oh, I can see what's wrong. There's a little bit of stuff. Oh, I felt that click. Hold on. Did that go? Because I felt it get smaller. Oh, I think it did. Awesome. Right, it's on. Me and those things are never friends. I know that. So now we're going to come across to here and we want to be in, again, we want to be in line with this because it goes around the bag perfectly well. So then... 
Uh, I want to take something that's erasable. And I'm going to show you. So I'm lining this up here so that is in line with the strapping. And I want to just put a line in the middle. So that is where I want this to go. Make sure that your prongs are straight. You don't want them out too far. And then, so that's where I want that. So I'm going to draw the prong lines like this. And then I have to undo the zipper pocket because I was not supposed to stitch it up yet. It is a habit, clearly a bad one or a good one, depending on which way you look at it. I mean, at least I always stitch up the pockets as opposed to forgetting them. But sometimes I do it at the wrong time. So I don't use a quick unpick. For anybody that doesn't hasn't been here before, I refuse to use them. I have destroyed more projects than I can count with a quick unpick. So instead, I just snip the threads with my little thread snipper. If I had to pick one sewing tool that is my absolute favourite, it is 100% these. Uh, coming in with the close second is my sewing awl. So now that I've got a little bit of a gap, I can just come in and snip the threads and pull and snip the threads and pull. And it will open up the pocket. That's enough. I just actually need to be able to get my hand in there so that I can pull the lining away from the vinyl. So I'm doing this with my hand around here. Then I'm going to put one slit, two slits, push this through there. And the reason we needed to get our hand in is because you have to put the gasket on the back. If you don't put this on, it's not going to stay stable. So you absolutely have to put this on. So it goes on to the two prongs. And then these ones I bend inwards. Because then they're on top of each other and it's harder to pull them apart. See, different things, I bend different ways. So then that's on there. We'll pretend I've done that. Give me a second. Then the bag sits like this. This comes around. No, not that one. This one comes around and goes onto there like that and does up. How cool is that? I love it. That is a very well thought out bag. Now we're not finished. We still have our straps to do. So we need to go. I'm going to hold this so it's flat and we need to take our strap adjusters and we're going to go up and down through the strap adjuster and you want to use a lot of the strap for this so bring it right up and then I'm going to go down and up and scoop up through there and then I'm going to go through the inside strap adjust apart. This is where it can get a little tricky. Like that. So it's gone around twice. You got the big loop, you keep the big loop so that you can see what you're doing. And then I'm going to put a strap end on here. Because again, it's the little things. This bag is all about the hardware, so I want to use it. So we're going to take a mini screw. These ones are magnetic. Apparently it's just the other ones that didn't want to play ball. Although my, I definitely need to replace the batteries. That one's not all the way in yet, but I am going to do that. One, and, oh, see that? It just slid off. Don't be like that. And two, in she goes. Not too sure why that one won't go in there. There we 
go. So the strap end is on. Now I'm going to shuffle this strap end back a little bit. Because um, I don't want to waste too much of the strap hanging out. And then we're going to just put a rivet in it so it will set. I'm going to leave this one open. And I'm just going to feed this side up a little bit more. Like that. That's enough. And bring the other side down. So I've got, what have I got? An inch and a quarter. And then I can rivet that to there. And then we'll repeat with the other side. Now you don't want to get too close to the um, up here when you're trying to put your rivet in or you won't be able to actually do it. So that's why I've left that little bit extra. So now I don't have to fight the strap to get it in. Grab a rivet and a cap. And then that's going to hold that in place. Or you can stitch it, um, but I do think that stitching this would be quite tricky, which is why rivets are a better idea. Squish. So that's one side done. Now we're going to repeat with the other side. So I want to come down, make sure there's no twists, put this all the way up there, and then back down the other side, leaving a nice big loop here. And then we're going to go up through the base, oops, in and loop, up like this, and then we're going to go in one side of the strap adjuster, down the other side, and you can rivet first and then strap end, or you can strap end and then rivet. That is your choice. I am going to strap end and then rivet. I like to slide them on sideways, I find I get them on better. And then I'm going to take this and my electric screwdriver I love my electric screwdriver if you're not sure what you want people to get you for Christmas this is a great option all right and then I just need to rivet this down so again, I want to make sure I've got the right amount out, or the same amount as the other side. I am going to squish. I am going to rivet. And then my bag. Oh no, it's not done. We're going to stitch up the zipper pocket again. Notice I'm waiting till the very, very end this time. I don't want to have to unstitch it twice. Okay. awesome I love that open so we can get to the zipper pocket now if you skipped the zipper pocket and you didn't want to put one in for whatever reason you didn't have a zip at the time or something you'll just have to top stitch the lining closed because you won't be able to turn it through here Instead of the top stitching being in here, it would be down one side of the lining of your bag. And back stitch. Alright. Now we tuck it in. And now we're done. I really like the key as the zipper pull. I think it gives it like a little something extra. But anyway, that... Is the bag done guys tilt the camera up so that you can see that came out fabulous and then this comes around onto here and then you twist it shut it's awesome thank you for joining me um i hope that was
was somewhat informative for you. Give this a go. This is a really stylish bag. I really like it. Or backpack, not bag. Backpack. But yeah, thanks for joining, guys. I'll see you next time.